it's time to talk about Andrew Cuomo, everybody. When the whole coronavirus thing started happening, um, Andrew Cuomo got this crazy boost in favorability um, because, you know, for boomer Democrats, basically the only thing you need to do to make them happy is appear on MSNBC. <clears throat> and, you know, he, he, he definitely served as a foil. He started doing these press conferences about COVID in New York. And he definitely served as a foil to uh, old Donnie boy, right? With the, uh, you know, maybe you could inject bleach or, uh, you know, we could get ultraviolet light inside the body. We could do that. Uh, figure it out. Figure it out. I'm full of these ideas, right? Um, but then Andrew Cuomo, uh, you know, was doing all his, all of his uh, press conferences. And, I mean, just as, t uh, you know, thousands and thousands of people died in New York. Uh, Andrew Cuomo made fights with Bill de Blasio over shutting down, got all butthurt that Bill de Blasio was, uh, you know, ahead of the game on COVID more so than he was just a e egotistical Andrew Cuomo is, is blue MAGA. He's just a, he's just a democratic Trumpian figure on, he's a Trumpian figure on the democratic party. Not impressed by him. Um, I mean, the guy, the guy already wrote a book saying how we defeated COVID and yeah, buddy, we ain't out of this thing yet. Who are you fooling? Who or you know, who, who are you kidding? Right? Well, now shit is getting real for Andy Cuomo. Uh, and it's because he, and th this also happened here in California too, but not to the degree that it did in New York, but under Andrew Cuomo's guy, you know, official decisions, uh, Elderly people infected with COVID-19 were funneled to uh, elderly rest homes, nursery, n nursing homes, not nursery homes, nursing homes. Okay. Where, uh, oh yeah, terribly sexy. Thank you for chiming in. Said Cuomo got an Emmy for real. Re yeah. And, and if you guys don't know about this news, uh, there, there's a whole like segment of Emmys for just day, uh, for just television news. And to be honest, they pass them out like candy. You, can, you you put together a good like piece for TV news, you get an Emmy, okay? So yeah, he got an Emmy. He wrote a book, um, y you know. And meanwhile, his decisions led thousands of elderly New York New York State residents to die of COVID. He sent infected people to nursing homes where they quickly spread, um, and that was the highest mortality rate was among the elderly. That COVID uh, nineteen. That's why Italy was hit so hard. It's because they had one of the highest elderly populations in Europe, and there was also just a culture of you go visit your your nona, uh, you know, every day, and you kiss her on the cheek. Mwah, mwah, you know, it, that's what they do in Italy. So that's part of why it was so bad there. It was devastating, but it was devastating in New York because of the decisions that Cuomo made. Well, now we know that Cuomo was covering up the numbers. He covered up. COVID death numbers in New York specifically to do with these nursing homes. Um, check out this story. This is from the Daily Poster. This is David Sirota's uh, website. He was with the Bernie campaign. Really good left progressive independent media. That's what I am. I'm going to highlight some more of that here for you guys. Um, Cuomo gate, a Nixonian scandal is engulfing New York. Governor Cuomo's threatening retribution against Dems, demanding answers about underreported COVID deaths and his effort to help an industry uh, group shield nursing home executives. So he gave like immunity to nursing home executives. I love that David Sirota literally just puts this guy right next to Richard Nixon. That's fantastic. That's right. I mean to say it's not illegal when the president does it, right? That's a famous Nixon moment. Uh, so the biggest political scandal in America right now is playing out in New York, where Governor Andrew Cuomo is in a lot of trouble, and rightly so. The Democratic governor did not merely wildly mismanage his state's response to the COVID emergency while netting himself a lucrative book deal and an Emmy. He did something worse. In the middle of a public health emergency, he used his office to help one of his largest political donors shield itself from legal consequences as 15,000 nursing home residents died from COVID. 15,000 people, nursing home residents, died of COVID. Uh, and then he and his administration underreported that death toll, helping the same donor. So it's literally his own donors. Okay? 
Jeez, like I guys, I uh, look, look to my past videos. I did one about Gavin Newsom. Everybody was sharing that photo. Uh, the the right had a heyday when he was in a restaurant without his mask on, uh, eating indoors. They buried the lead on that story. G Newsom was hanging out with a lobbyist uh, who th who was a buddy of his, who he was basically helping out this lobbyist clients. Here we have a similar thing going on with An Andrew Cuomo where he's covering the ass of a massive donor of his guy, giving him tons of money, uh, making sure that, you know, he's not going to, uh, uh, you know, face any repercussions for the thousands of deaths, uh, preventable deaths of people uh, under his care. And, you know, uh, through policy decisions of Cuomo as well, this is just gnarly. Um, the Daily Poster has been covering this story for months before it exploded this week. The scandal is a cautionary tale of hubris, megalomania, and corruption that left a literal mountain of preventative, preventable COVID deaths in its wake. Now we're about to see whether a blue state's democratic institutions can hold wrongdoers accountable or whether America's culture of impunity can once again protect the powerful from facing any consequences at all. Um, so let's see. A bunch of people are telling him to resign. Um, there's word of potential federal investigation into the matter. He's being investigated. The governor and his aides are frantically trying to cover up the basic facts of what happened. And that includes launching a Nixonian campaign of intimidation or retribution against Democratic lawmakers who have for months been sounding the alarm. Um, so he has been... So Cuomo has been intimidating uh like uh new york like state assembly members calling them on the phone telling me well i will destroy you. you know i need to do the new york accent i will destroy you right uh, uh you know what are you talking about i don't know i'm not that good with the new york um <laughs> sorry to anybody in new york you know no, no offense meant uh but he's intimidating members of his own party who are just trying to get to the facts um, and they're, they're, I mean, you're not under federal investigation unless you're doing some pretty heinous stuff like trying to destroy evidence and other kinds of, I mean, that's Nixonian stuff right there. Well, look at this. Fact one, Como's machine raked in two million from industry group. Um, two million from the Greater New York Hospital Association, its executive and lobbying firms. Healthcare industry group also funneled more than $450,000 to members of the New York legislature in 2020. Whoa, whoa, look at this. State campaign donations. 2018 went through the roof. That's insane. Fact two, Cuomo, Cuomo helped industry group shield nursing home execs. Wow. Cuomo's corporate immunity law went national. Really? Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. That, that It's funny, that heinous thing that Republicans wanted to do. Jay Coleman, forget about it over here. Yeah, forget about it. Man. So uh, I criticized Republicans for having this heinous uh, thing they wanted to add to a COVID bill, which was uh, immunity for corporations. If employees or even clients, uh, uh, you know, customers died from COVID because of their own negligence. Look at this. This came from Andrew Cuomo. Cuomo's corporate immunity provision was quickly copied and pasted into other states' laws and into the Senate Republican legislation in near word-for-word -word fashion. The liability shield spread from New York to other states, even as New York Assemblyman Ron Kim released a report showing that states with liability shields were reporting higher nursing home death rates during the pandemic. Guys, this is awful. Cuomo's immunity law endangered lives, according to the Attorney General. Oh my gosh, guy! There's so much here. Cuomo's top aide admitting to withhold admitted to withholding info. Cuomo's top aide Melissa DeRosa admitted that Cuomo's administration not only withheld information about nursing home deaths, but did so in order to preemptively avoid political and legal consequences. "Quote: We were in a position where we weren't sure if what we were going to give to the Department of Justice or what we give to state legislatures, and what we were saying was going to be used against us." She told New York le legislators last week. This is awful. This is awful. And, um, I mean, the, the investigations are only just beginning. The, um, you know, the, only now is the mainstream media, you know, I put air quotes around that, paying attention to this, right? Because it's become so clear. Uh, if the, the Justice Department, the Attorney General is looking into this, obviously there's something there. This is why the work of journalists like David Sirota, independent progressive 
and left journalists. Um, you know, basically where we're at uh, with independent left media is where the right wing was like 20 years ago, uh, where they would use their websites like the Drudge Report and others to try to influence and seed things into Fox News and then try to propagate it, you know, like, uh, except, you know, they do it with lies and misinformation. The left media basically has to be dogged and and keep digging and keep looking into stuff like this. David Sirota has been on this story for weeks and probably months at this point, And only now is it getting the attention that it rightly deserves. And, you know, I just I do have a message. I have been accused of just, uh, you know, like uh, standing for politicians. You just love politicians um, for my videos about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the Democratic Socialist representative from Brooklyn. And, uh, you know, uh, a lot of like Jimmy Dore fans, right, uh, you know, uh, love to hate her. Um, and they just she's just a Democrat, just like any other Democrat. But, you know, they they really just ignore when you have a real politic and a real left ideology and and values and ideals that you actually hold to. Uh, you might be surprised what you get. If, if you just want to smear and hate the squad and call them fraud squad, well, you're never going to see any of this stuff. It's just going to fall on deaf, deaf, deaf ears uh, because, you know, it's, you don't have your hate porn uh, to just hate the, the, the squad. But Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez came out today, uh, calls for, quote, full investigation of Governor Andrew Cuomo's handling of COVID-19 in nursing homes. Guys, if you don't know, Andrew Cuomo has an incredible amount of influence in New York. He's intimidating these assembly members. AOC is has a federal seat. She's on, in the House. And she is maybe one of the best-known Democrats from New York at the federal level, you know, outside of Chuck Schumer and, and a few others. Um, but she she has built her reach. You know, she's only a sophomore Congress member, and she's already using this to, to to hold accountable. You know, to call out one of the most powerful Democrats uh, in in the country. AOC joined fellow New York Democrats in calling for an investigation into Governor Andrew Cuomo. Let's hear uh, what she had to say. Uh, let's see. Thousands of vulnerable New Yorkers lost their lives in nursing homes throughout the pandemic, Ocasio-Cortez said in a statement on Friday. Their loved ones in the public deserve answers and transparency from their elected leadership. And the secretary of the governor's uh, remarks warrant a, f a full investigation. And the secretary to the governor's remarks warrant a full investigation. I see. Um, the New York Attorney General Letitia James released a report in January accusing the Cuomo administration of deliberately undercounting COVID-19 nursing home deaths by excluding thousands of nursing home residents who died in hospitals. Wow, about 15,000 residents of nursing homes and long-term care facilities have died in New York since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic. Um, I mean, yeah, and that's the thing. If you just want to if you just want to hate the squad and say, "Oh, they're just like uh, regular Democrats." Well, then you just you you're not paying attention. You don't want to engage in electoral politics. If if you just hate all electoral politics, then go go fly a kite, man. Like go do something to bring your blood pressure down. If you don't see that people like AOC who really the squad have been like an insurgent left force within the centrist pro-corporate Democrat. She unseated uh, uh, what was his name? Joe Manchin, right? The or, or uh, no, that's um, it's the guy in the Senate making our lives hell right now. Uh, whatever the guy's name was, she unseated. Very corporate uh, donor influenced Democrat. She unseated him. She had she has continued to primary centrists. Uh, you know, Justice Democrats, the organization she's a part of has continued to do that. Jay Coleman in the comments says elections have consequences. Yes, they do. And here we have somebody, Crowley, thank you, Joe Crowley. A lot of Joes out there. The Joes, we're not sending our best. I'm sorry. Joe Biden, Joe, Ka Joe Crowley, Joe Manchin. Not all Joes, okay, guys? Hashtag not all Joes. I'm one of them, okay? I'm a good Joe. Above average Joe, I like to say. But uh, so, I mean, th this is, you know, th this is why we, if you don't see AOC as an ally, I don't know what you want politically. Um, if you, if you want to see a democratic party reformed and realigned to the left and brought to the left, um, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. Um, 
Ah, oh, Jay Andrew World saying Gillibrand just defended Cuomo. Of course she was. Kristen Gillibrand is a, you know, many times loser of elections. So she can say that all she wants. I mean, the, 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 our generation has seen through the nonsense. We are not, you know, we don't have a living memory of Ronald Reagan, right? Most of us don't, you know, the, the more the millennial generation, the Gen Z's were much farther to the left. We don't live in Reagan's America. Um, we're not haunted by uh, 1980 like these were, these Democrats, like the Nancy Pelosi's and the Chuck Schumer's and the Joe Biden's and the Gillibrand's and all of them. Okay. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's astounding. It's astounding. Um, the, and so, yeah, that, that, that's, that's, uh, it, it, it's insane that, that, you know, and it's, it's interesting because, you know, the, the right will, uh, really lean on this Andrew Cuomo stuff. They're going to run uh, against it. They're going to say COVID wasn't that bad because of Trump. It was the Democrats. It was Andrew Cuomo. It was Gavin Newsom. And when you see Andrew Cuomo engaging in openly corrupt stuff like this, it's hard to argue with them. And that's why you have to embrace candidates that, um, frankly, are going to hold the party accountable themselves. Uh, Democrats that are going to, you know, we need to clean house. And that is definitely what candidates like AOC and the squad have done. They're not afraid to, you know, to talk about the Democratic Party without rose colored. Oh, you know, we just got to, you know, bipartisanship and this and this and that all the platitudes. They don't talk that way. So I'm excited to see more of them uh, get into the Senate eventually.